Now, how do you know the media are scared of this new trend? I'm sure you've seen it of Hispanics moving right. Well, the New York Times sent this L.A. based reporter to the Rio Grande Valley um, to write a hit piece about the new Republican Congresswoman Myra Flores, saying that she embraces the extreme while shunning moderates. She's a far right Latina, they said about her. So you have to ask yourself, what's so extreme? What's The New York Times so upset about? Her campaign slogan, I suppose, because it was God, family, country, was meant to appeal to what she calls the traditional values of her majority, Hispanic district in the bordered city of Brownsville. Well, of course, it's all sneering, right? Because they, these people pretend to care so much about the advancement of minorities and business, and education and society, politics. But unless minorities tow the far left Democrat line, what's going to happen? They're going to be smeared, just like my next guest. Here now to respond to the hit piece, Texas Congresswoman Myra Flores. Congressman, great to see you tonight. I think you've officially arrived. Welcome to the club. <laughs> people have been smeared by The New York Times. Got to give you a big hand. How does it feel? Honestly, I honestly don't really care about The New York Times. They know nothing about me or my culture. Like I said, we're all about God, family, and country. And that's who we are here in South Texas. And that's what they call far right. It's it's just insane, you know, how they they treat immigrants. You know, I'm an immigrant and they claim to be very supportive of us. But yet when we decide to run for office and because oh, no. we are, you know, excited and to promote our values, values that they're against, right? They're um, against the values that we stand for, God and family values. So they hate it. They hate it. So, no, I'm, you know, I honestly don't really care about the New York Times. I'm focused yeah, on a, the district that I'm running. Yeah, it's a total badge of honor. Um, so you, I'm sure, <laughs> well, you probably were too busy. You were too busy, but the socialist Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez was dubbed a political star of the future when she won, kind of out of the blue. But you're just, apparently you're just a far-right menace. What do you say to... Latina women across the United States who are watching this tonight, wondering where they fit in politically and seeing things kind of turn so negatively in the economy and so forth uh, today. What, what's your message to them? Look, all I can say is AOC does not represent the, the, the Hispanic community, does, definitely does not represent Texas District 34 and who we are here. And we're not worried about, you know, the Washington nonsense, Latinx, you know, we're worried about the cost of living, gas, food, you know, health care. That's what we're worried every single day. We're not waking up, you know, and thinking about, you know, what's happening in Washington. They're just so disconnected. Um, it's it's really um, it's really sad because they think that the world revolves around Washington D.C. and that's really not the reality. I want to move to something obviously a lot more important to all of us, but especially to you in the Rio Grande Valley. Texas officials and lawmakers have made a new call in recent days. Watch. You hear the term invasion, and that's exactly what this is. It is an invasion that is being pushed by the cartels into our country, and it must come to a stop. Recognize an invasion, an invasion of the state of Texas that is undermining our security, risking the health and well-being of Texans. Congresswoman, do you agree with that terminology? Is this an invasion, given the sheer number of people crossing the border every week, every month? It really concerns me, um, but I put the blame on the current administration, the Biden administration. They're, you know, the ones that are encouraging people to come here to the United States, uh, knowing the dangers. They encourage people to go through this dangerous journey, knowing women will get raped, knowing children will be put into child sex trafficking. They know that but yet they encourage people to come here. Look, uh, the blame is all on the Biden administration and people like Vicente Gonzalez who continue to promote people to come here illegally, knowing the dangers. Look, I immigrated to this yeah, country but, but illegally. Congresswoman, but Congresswoman, it's not just, it's not just, it's not just, you know, mothers and their three-year-old children crossing the Rio Grande. I mean, I've been no. there, I've spent a, you no, know, quite a bit of time. Their not. cartels They're are real. running that border. They're running the border. Absolutely. So I'm asking you very bluntly, yeah. Is this an invasion that's being run in part by the cartels into the United States for influence, money, and drugs? Yes or no? 
Yeah, there's definitely uh, millions of people coming into this country. I do agree with you on that. And yes, the cartel has taken over the cartel. You cannot cross illegally unless you pay thousands and thousands of, of dollars. And yes, there's children and women coming into our country, but yet, but also a lot of horrible people, terrorists also coming into our country, putting uh, the American people in danger. So I agree with you. We do have a serious problem, but I do put the blame on the Biden administration. Well, they're letting it happen. And Congresswoman, again, welcome to the club. You've been officially <laughs> anointed and baptized into the, into the club of the New York Times. Hated. Uh, great to see you tonight. Thanks so much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.